The CHGO White Sox pregame show coming to you live from Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Alongside me, Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. Thank you to Sarah for producing us today. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi! Uh, hit the thumbs up button and also that tickled it, me because it was different. It was different. I, it threw me off. Your intro is different though. Usually you're like in our producer Sarah, so I just I shook it up. Mm, you rolled with it. Um, there you go. Uh, this show is presented by Factor. Use code C H G O S O X at factormeals.com slash chgosox50 to get 50% off your first meal. I don't think I said chgosox50, so that's the code, and then go to factormeals.com slash chgosox50 to get 50% off your first box. Mm -hmm. We are joining you for a pregame for the Guardians and White Sox, a very shady Cleveland uh, yeah. today. It's a three-game series between the Guardians and Sox. 4-10 game today, 5-10 game tomorrow, 5-10 game on Wednesday. We will have a post-game show for each one of those games. This is our only pre-game. Uh, we're going to be doing these at the start of each series. Uh, so, you know, not on Friday because we don't work on Fridays. Uh, but, you know, Monday when they take on Kansas City, we'll have another pre-game for you. Uh, Fred in the chat saying he'd rather look at the Eclipse than watch White Sox baseball. And that's what I tried to say to you guys, but you told me that was a bad idea. I mean, we, me and you, have to watch White Sox baseball. We have protective glasses, though, when we do watch them. So you don't have to. You could just check us out on these pregames and these postgames, and we'll inform you exactly what happened. Because yeah, if you watch White Sox baseball for as many times as we do, it will hurt your eyes and your brain, and it'll hurt your heart, too. So let us do that. Remember, future Herb, like, aged like a president. Because he had to watch White Sox baseball for 162. We got this, guys. Go do something else. It's a beautiful day out there in Chicago. 70 degrees. I would advise you not to watch White Sox baseball. And then after the game's over, come check us out. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not missing much because Luis Robert Jr. is hurting on the 10-day IL. Aloy Jimenez is hurting on the 10-day IL. Uh, it, it's going to be tough. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, did you see what Pedro Grafal had to say about the solar eclipse? I did. Because they were in the path of totality. Cleveland yeah. was in the path of totality. It went completely dark there for about two to four minutes. Uh, even our CHGO White Sox beat writer took the day off, Vinny Duber, went to Indianapolis to go wit witness uh, some complete totality. Pedro Griffol, by luck, by happenstance, was in Cleveland and said, no. Nah. He's like, I'm good. I don't need to see it. I want to see baseball. Did he say that? He's like, uh, no, I'm good. And it won't happen for like another 20 years. So I don't know why Pedro would be so adverse to it. Like, it's not like he's getting his team ready to win or anything like that. Check it out. Look at the sun. Get those protective glasses on, Pedro. It's a once, well, not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's a very rare occurrence, especially when you're in the path of totality like he was in Cleveland, just by happenstance. Enjoy it. We in the Chicago weren't in that path. I saw it get a little bit darker. It was a here, little dark. But it, was it, wasn't, little... it wasn't like noticeable yeah. really that it was like, oh, man, that's a total eclipse or a solar eclipse. If you didn't know today was a solar eclipse, he was like, it's kind of darker, but it's like, Sun's still out, though. It got cold, though. We were standing on the roof to go look at it, and we thankfully, Jake had some sunglasses or some solar uh, eclipse glasses, uh, and you were able to see it. And it, the sun became like a like a tiny, like a new moon, basically, yeah. like basically like a little tiny crescent. It was cool to see. Yeah. I, got to, I got to not the shadows work for 15 were really minutes. cool, too, because one of the things about it is like the shadows all kind of it's like when you're drunk. So all the trees shadows were it was like weird to see it on the sidewalks. I thought mm. that was honestly really interesting. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The shadows create like this weird um, mirror of it because of the way the sun is. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. But it when does it. It was cool. High school. Mm -hmm. We had, a, I think, a total eclipse like 94. And I didn't look directly at the sun because I didn't have the glasses. But I had that uh, you like take a. I think it was cardboard, and you cut a circle in it and just showed you on the ground how the sun looked. 
so you could see it's kind of like a half crescent moon and then it gets low, littler and littler and then it gets bigger and bigger. Hmm. I did not realize that. You should, yeah. Did you make one today? No, oh. I already did it in high school. So I was like, I've seen it. Got you. Uh, but and, and I wasn't traveling to Indianapolis or Cleveland. <laughs> but if I was in either one of those cities, yeah, Vinny and his wife are adventurous. That's good that they want to go and see something that they haven't seen. But me, I'm old. Right. I've seen that before. And, and Pedro Grafal says, here in Cleveland in the path of totality, and this is from Ash, Anthony Katravins of uh, MLB.com, uh, for the last total solar eclipse in the contingu- contiguous U.S. until 20, 2044, said he will not be viewing it. In fact, he was pretty adamant about it. Quote, I'll see videos of it. But there's baseball. The one and eight baseball team needs to figure things around. And Pedro Grafal is obsessed with turning them around, Herb. Why can't he do enough? Is it because managers don't matter? Is it because he sucks and managers don't matter? There it is. Oh, okay. um, I don't think people get inspired by him. I know that, you know, Tito Francona inspired his Cleveland Guardians to wins. And he put the right pieces into place. It seems like Pedro just, I don't know, if, if you had to listen to him, for 162, would you be inspired? No. You just see the quotes that he has out there. Like, ugh, it's really tough. Imagine if you're one of those players who just came off a 61 and 101 year, and then you got to listen to the same dude that had that, and you start off one and eight. You're like, shut that right off immediately. He lost the locker room. Like, these guys are not listening to him. Why would they? He hasn't shown any type of competence. He hasn't shown any type of success with his message. So, I would turn him off right there immediately. And after nine games, we already hear it from Garrett Crochet. Guys got to get angry. Guys have to get mad. Guys have to get pissed off. And I don't know. It just it doesn't seem like it's truly. Uh, uh, they needed all twenty six guys to pull all of their weight, and it feels like one guy, two guys, three guys are pulling their weight, and everyone else is just dead weight. Think about it. It's, who's the White Sox best hitter right now? A yeah. guy that we would have DFA'd and or sent down to the minors. It's Gavin Sheets, who's having a pretty good start to his uh, season. The only reason he is is because our guy, Aloy Jimenez, got hurt. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, And we're having starting Robbie Grossman is our leadoff hitter. Like That guy was on the streets until right before the season. And that guy's starting off because our other leadoff hitter can't hit. He's our most highest paid player in the history of the franchise. They had to demote him to fifth. And then I got the the play-by-play guys like, man, this guy, I'm glad that Andrew Benintendi's hitting fifth because yeah. this man's much better in RBI situations. He's like one for 20 in RBI situations. And the White Sox as a whole are like hitting below 150 in RBI situations. So, yeah, I don't want to hear all this garbage. I... I'm just mad at this team, and these players should be embarrassed, firstly, and secondly, get mad that they're getting clowned, that they are the worst team in baseball, even though the Marlins have a worse record. Marlins have been playing actual good teams with good records. White Sox haven't necessarily played good teams. The Kansas City outfit is not damn good, huh. even though their record is 6-4. and four. I can't stand getting swept by the Kansas City Royals, and they're not damn good. And we didn't face their best pitcher. The guy Imagine that was, when that happens. Right. The guy that was handed the job that the owner didn't need to do any interviews for is said that the elephant in the room is how bad the AL Central is. They're 0-7 yeah. against the AL Central. Like, it's just pathetic beyond belief. And, and now here they we are play the, covering them for you. And now they have to play the best team in the AL Central record-wise now. Ugh. At their place where they haven't even played a home game yet, so they got this record all on the road. Imagine that. They and, played games on the road in Seattle. I think I forgot where they started at, but they've been on the road this whole time and winning games. The White Sox have been at home on the road, only won one. And arguably now with Bieber out, they're facing the three best pitchers Cleveland has, and Tristan McKenzie, Logan Allen, and Tanner Beebe. Uh, let's go to the lineups for today's game for the Chicago White Sox. We'll get into some click to pick. We'll tell you about the pitchers for today because we really didn't know the White Sox pitcher until about mm, three hours ago, four right. hours ago when the clubhouse opened. Uh, the starting nine for your Chicago White Sox Ugh. leading off will be Robbie Grossman, mm-hmm. the switch hitting right fielder, batting yep. second. Apropos, the switch hitting third baseman, Yohan Moncada, batting third, Gavin Sheets at DH, the lefty, batting fourth, right hander, uh, Andrew Vaughn at first base, Ugh. batting fifth, my guy, Andrew Benatendi Ugh. in left field, batting sixth, Dominic Fletcher in center field, Ugh. Braden Shoemake at shortstop. Ugh. Hey, come on, That's he's terrible, too. My guy. <laughs> That's a, that's a guy I'm going with click to pick. Rushing to second base to get out of Salvi Perez going down the line, Yuck. making an error. Uh, at eight, Corey Lee, the catcher. He's done all right. I like him. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of him. And then our guy, uh, Nicky Stolen Base Lopez uh, at second base. Rough go, man. 0 for 4, right? Yeah, 0 for 4. <laughs> He'll get it. Hey, honestly, I don't care. 
I mean, he can get thrown out a hundred times. I do not care. Uh, and your starting pitcher for today, Tanner Banks for the Chicago White Sox. We'll tell you more about Tanner in just a second. And a great, inspiring quote from Pedro uh, that just is just insane. Uh, then we'll hear one from. Uh, we'll see the Guardians lineup now. Guardians lineup is as follows. Leading off for them is Stephen Kwan in Ambassador. left field, batting second. Jose Ramirez at third base, batting third. David Fry. Who? Who that made up? That's their third hitter? Did that make that up? Designated hitter David Fry? I've never heard of this person ever. Is this a real thing? Are they trolling us? They're just that dude's gonna hit like four home runs this It's on series. MLB website. No, we're not saying you're wrong. We're just <laughs> saying like I mean truly. No, I know. I was like, hey, I don't know. If that's six six feet two fifteen. I mean, we talk about Andrew Vaughn being small. This guy's smaller than Andrew Vaughn. I mean six feet he's taller than Andrew Vaughn, but yeah, smaller. I mean same listed. But I mean. but Jose Ramirez as always, <laughs> four. You put up the intention walk, especially now that David Farai is behind him, not White Sox killer Josh Naylor, who's hitting fourth. Uh, I'll, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, David Fry, uh, maybe we should know about him. A batting average of 455, 529, and a slugging of 818. Uh, okay, all right. An OPS of 1348. So maybe we got to watch out for David Fry. I mean, he's hitting third. Yeah, he is. Uh, but, I mean, Cleveland's pretty bad, though. Uh, batting fourth, Josh Naylor at first base. Batting fifth, Tyler Freeman in center field. Batting sixth, Ramon Laureano in right field. Batting seventh, Andres Jimenez at second base. Batting eighth, Austin Hedges at catcher. And batting ninth, Brian Rocchio at shortstop in a starting pitcher, which is probably all that matters for Cleveland because yes. uh, the White Sox won't score a run against him. Tristan Sticks McKenzie. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll let you know about our friends over at Prize Picks and Game Time, and then we'll tell you more about uh, Tanner Banks and what the White Sox expect from him and Tristan McKenzie. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the number numbers, and instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's a very fun way to watch the game, and since spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway, don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more than or less than and add them to your prize pick entries today. Get in on the playoff action too as well with basketball starting up and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Playoffs begin April 20th. The play on play play in round begins April 16th, 17th and 19th and Making an entry is very simple. You can make your picks and submit entries in less than 60 seconds. So head over to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for his first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy, but a uh, little sticks, more strikeouts, and maybe uh, Gavin, Gavin Sheets to have more than one hit. What's the number at? I don't know. Six. Whatever the number's at, I'm going over, yes. But Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace from Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even easier and faster. Prices at Game Time Act actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I just recently bought some tickets for this later this month with the Milwaukee Brewers playing the mm. New York Yankees. I think it's... Uh, April 26th up there in the great land. And I've gone to many different stadiums around this great nation of ours, including Atlanta, where I bought tickets a couple years ago on game time, looked at all the rest of the secondary markets to see if there was a lower price anywhere. One site had it. And so I sent this information to game time in the same row and section, by the way. And within uh, 12 minutes, I got 110% of the difference into my account. You could save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And with zone deals, as I did in Milwaukee, you save even more when you choose the section and let game time choose the seats. I think the seats were about $125 usually, and I got them for $88 each up there in Milwaukee nice. using zone deals. And you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy if you've ever been to a stadium with obstructed views like Wrigley, you know that this comes into clutch performance when you need it because you can't be one behind one of those poles in the 200 section. It's one of the worst. You're cold and you can't see the game. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. And for a limited time, save $20 off of any MLB purchase of $150 or more with the Game Time app. Use the code FIRSTPITCH. Terms apply. 
That's code F-I-R-S-T-P-I-T-C-H for $20 off from March 25th until April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Nice. Uh, and then the number four sticks for Tristan McKenzie is five and a half. Oh, I'm already hit it. So we are I've definitely going to uh, take more on uh, Tristan McKenzie there. And let's tell you a little bit about sticks because you might go to his baseball reference page and check out his career numbers against the White Sox and think, baby, a 564 ERA, they're going to eat. Mm-mm. No? No. You don't think so? No. Why is that? Because I think he got blown up, I think, in 2022 or 2021 mm. versus the White Sox. But every other time I remember Tristan McKenzie pitching against the White Sox, he has struck out a bunch of people, and they haven't seen him really for the mo- majority of his career. I think he's elevated from one year where I think he might have got hurt at the end of that year. Yeah, you're dead on. He was hurt last year, so he didn't see the White Sox at all in 2023. But 2022, let's go through his last four starts against the White Sox. Okay. Four and a third, one hit, one walk, or four walks, sorry, four strikeouts, one earned run. July 23rd, 2022, five and two thirds, four hits, one walk, or sorry, two walks, four strikeouts, one earned run. August 19th, seven innings, six hits, two earned runs, no walks, 14 Ks. (laughs) September 21st, eight innings, six hits, two earned runs, 13 strikeouts, one home run. Mm -hmm. So in 2022, he had a 215 ERA against the White Sox. And in his last two games, he struck out 27 Chicago White Sox. And that was so better hitting White Sox at 2022 yeah. when we're 81 and 81. That team that we were longing for, a 500 White Sox team. Remember, during the current time, we're like, this is the worst team of all time. We're so disappointed. Man, will we give up to have an 81 and 81 team now? Goodness Literally. gracious. Oh, my God. I mean, I would go back to having Tony La Russa manage this team oh my god than having what we have right now i mean this is just sad pathetic and brutal and, and one of the people that you probably don't want to pick today versus Tr- tristan mckenzie is andrew vaughn he's ba- faced them 14 times he has no hits the only way he got on base mm-hmm. is because tristan mckenzie is as he wants to do hit him with a pitch so that's not nice over 13 one hit by pitch Six strikeouts. Woof. Um, and then the White Sox are throwing out their ace, right? I mean, Tan Banks versus these Cleveland Guardians in his 13 innings hasn't given up much, but I don't know how long a Tanner Banks will be on the bump today, and they haven't really faced him enough. He's usually in a relief role versus these Cleveland Guardians, but he is a left-hander, and the Cleveland Guardians, as you saw, their switch hit in left-handed, um, you know, usually heavy, and so maybe they can, uh, you know, kind of – ISO or just diminish their power as left-handed hitters. I would much rather face Jose Ramirez from the right side than the left side. But also, it's four. If throw up the four every time Jose Ramirez is up there. I don't care if he grounds into a double play uh, during this game and you say, hey, Herb, look at what happened. He threw it into a double play. Don't risk it. There's no one behind him that can do damage except for the fourth hitter, which is Josh Naylor. Until somebody shows, until David Fry shows you that he can beat you, you put up the four for him and let everybody else on the Cleveland Guardians beat you. If you lose today to Jose Ramirez specifically, you should be fired. And uh, shout out to Wayne. He said, I feel really sorry for you guys. Don't worry. We, we're having fun. Wait, we even though the news. baseball is bad, A, we love baseball. And B, you know, I mean, it's it's a job. I mean, we're, we're having fun. We're having as much fun as possible. And we're going to try to have as much fun as possible on the postgame show, no matter what. Even if this team is 1 in 161, we're going to have a blast and make fun of them. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. We do appreciate everyone hanging out with us. Uh, make sure you're subscribing to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Kevin's asking, is this a bullpen day? Uh, prior to today's series at Cleveland, the White Sox did place John Brebby on the 15-day injured list that's retroactive to April 6th with a right calf strain and then recalled pitcher Jared Schuster from Class A. I thought it was going to be Schuster, but this quote from Pedro seems like it's going to be a bullpen day. Every time I put a limitation on Banks, he seems to exceed those limitations. So I've decided to give him the ball and say, I'll see you when you're done. We'll let him pitch, and when there's a good matchup and we feel he's not the guy, we'll make a move. So... If they're going with a lefty, I don't think they would replace him with a lefty. No. So I I don't think that Schuster will be the guy. I don't know if Schuster pitches for the White Sox, to be honest. I have no idea what they plan to roll out, but I would say very clearly that this is going to be a bullpen game, and we'll see if Tanner Banks can go 3-5. to I think 
if I'm reading this right, maybe, you know, bringing up Schuster, I thought he would be the starter here because he has starter innings in the past, and so does Tanner Banks, but maybe you can have him instead of, in the stead of Tanner Banks as you don't have a lot of lefties in the bullpen for the White Sox, so you just take him and put him in that same role that Tanner would have been in. And so, yes, you don't, like, go in that lineup and just replace him there, but maybe you do, as I said before, you would probably much rather face Josh Naylor with a left-hander. You definitely want to face Jose Ramirez with a left-hander instead of a right-hander. It doesn't really matter with Jose Ramirez, but they have a lot of players like that that, you probably are more inclined to do the lefty matchup instead of the righty matchup. And there's no real word on what Schuster will pitch. Uh, there, there wasn't any pregame quotes on Schuster um, from what I saw, so I don't, I don't really know what to expect from this outside of see if Tanner Banks can go through the order at least once, right? I think they give him nine batters. Unless he's getting... Humbled, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously. Um, I think, you know, after, like, if, you, if you're if you the White Sox and you know how many runs you score, like you've scored 16 runs in nine games, you need to have some shutdown innings. If they score two in that first inning, you got to, hey, Tan, it's been real, man. We got to win this game and we got to take you out because we're not going to score more than two. Like, it's going to be very hard for us to score more than two. So we need a shutout from, you know, innings one through three at least for Tanner Banks. If he's getting shelled, even one, two runs, you might have to look to somebody else because this White Sox team can't score runs, and you have to manage as if you know that they can't score runs. We've heard a lot of goofy questions uh, as Sox fans. Uh, Carm asked us, you know, when will the White Sox win 10 games? We threw out May 10th, yeah. uh, and you went through the schedule, and, and May 10th seems like it's probably feasible. But I think Victor asks a pretty good question. Pedro's on pace to lose 200 games before he wins his first 100 games. He's 62 and 109. Does he win 48 more games before he loses, I guess, uh, what, 90, 91? 91? <sighs> I mean, does he win 48 games this year? Or 40 whatever games this year? No. Yeah, 48 I mean, we, games. We predicted that, yes, he would do that, but... Seeing the product out there now where they're one and eight, yes, this is kind of a tougher part of their schedule, but every part of their schedule is tough because they're terrible. Mm -hmm. So I looked at every one of those teams. I was like, the White Sox are worse than that team. Yeah, they might pitch as a starting unit better than some, and I think they're like 10th or 11th in ERA, but they can't hit. If you can't hit, it's going to be tough to win games. Well, And there's this and then their bullpen is hella bad, too. And if you think this is tough, just wait until they don't play the AL Central. Uh, May 17th starts this crazy run. Three games against the Yankees, nope. three games against the Blue Jays, nope. four against the Orioles, nope. three against the Blue Jays, Good. three against Milwaukee, Ugh. two against the Cubs, oh, God. four against Boston, Damn it. four against Seattle, three against Arizona, three against Houston, three against Detroit, three against the Dodgers, and then that makeup game against Atlanta. Mm. After Atlanta, you get to play the Rockies. Mm, so. Deep. There's mm. a silver line. Fork and knife. Uh, mm, mm, mm. And imagine, imagine they get swept by the Rockies. Is it that, out there? That would be hilarious. Uh, no, it's here. Oh, okay, then we're that's uh, dubs. So. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We we'll go out to Colorado. It's bad because uh, Larry Garcia gets picked off third base all the time. And that's the thing too. Like on July 5th, you're gonna play Miami. I know Miami just won their first game. Miami's gonna kick this team's ass. Miami's not that bad. Uh, I mean, they just had a fairly decent, like rough start to the year with a lot of pitching. In Is it. that a three game set? Uh, yeah, that's a three game set. Jake so. Berger's hitting eight home runs in that J series. Jake Berger's hitting eight home runs. Tim Luisa getting like 12 Luis hits. Luisa Rise is going to get out once. <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. Um, all right. Uh, let's go to our clicks to pick for today's games, our prediction as well, uh, whether the White Sox will win or lose. Herb, do you want to kind of prep people on click to pick just so uh, we know who's the new diehard? The new diehard is Alejandro, who we met Are out they? there at um, Ballpark Pub on opening day. He joined the, the day before as a diehard. Now he's in. Only diehards get to pick with us in these uh, pick-to-click or click-to-pick uh, selections. He selected today, let's see, um, Corey Lee, Corey Lee yeah. catcher off the board. I'm going to select Yoan Moncada, who has a point to his name. Corey Lee has five points to the name. So if Corey Lee was to be the click-to-pick today, our guy Alejandro would get five points for his selection today. Sean and Vinny went a different way, or Vinny went with Robbie Grossman. He's got three points associated with his name. So if Robbie Grossman was a click to pick today, 
uh, Vinny would get three points. And this past week, Vinny won our contest. So our our uh, participant, Jared, finished in third place because Sean finished with nine points. Vinny finished with 13. Um, Jared finished with one. I had zero this last week. So I'm trying to get back and try to win this week. If our guy, Alejandro, gets more points this week from Sunday to Monday than uh, then all three of us, he has to beat all three of us, we give him a T-shirt, free T-shirt. You only get to participate if you are a Discord member. That means you got to be a diehard member. So go sign up, allchgo.com. You do get a shirt of your choice when you sign up. You get that nice, lovely box in front of us that that hat's on. Uh, you get a sticker pack. You get a membership card uh, along with access to the diehard. And uh, Vinny took the day off today, so I'm assuming tomorrow uh, he'll have White Sox Weekly out the Monday newsletter it's for our diehards. It is? Yeah, I saw it today. It was in my meal. It was in my uh, email today. He didn't Vinny share does not sleep. He didn't share it in Slack. Oh, no. Did he? I mean, hey, that's... He might have, but I saw... Yeah, I saw it earlier today, read it. It was good. So only diehards get to get Vinny's Damn. White Sox Weekly article. And so you want to get that. Vinny's in there. Hands up on me for not for not getting that. Look, yeah, yeah. Martin Maldonado's success with pitcher has been a rare bright spot in the White Sox abysmal start. All right, well, I got something to read uh, during the game. Very cool. Thanks, Vinny. Um, and Alex saying, the sun is my pick to click. I don't think that's a bad idea, uh, but yeah, I'm going with... You said you went with Braden Shoemake. Okay. I mean, I, I think Corey Lee's a great pick. If we're talking about value, Gavin Sheets is now way too overvalued for me. I think he's like, what, got two points? He's got two points. Yeah, no way. Because he's a left-hander, and he's also getting the only guy that hits. The third, the third most at-bats in this White Sox lineup. The reason why somebody asked me why Yoan was getting the second most at-bats, I was like, look at the rest of the lineup. It's like, it was... Luis Robert Jr. before he got hurt, and Yoan Moncada. Yoan Moncada is actually having a all right year, even though he's not hitting with power. But hold on, like he is though, and that's like I feel like people that are saying that he's not are just and not not watching the game because one of the people that said this was Jim Margulis, and I trust his opinion on the Sox, and I know that he watches games. But you look at 2023, like he's hitting the ball harder than last year. It was an 89.4 uh, eggs of average exit velocity. This year it's eighty nine point nine. Like he might, he hasn't scored squared one up for a homer yet, but he does have extra base hits. Yeah. Um, his sprint speed's up too. Uh, twenty six point eight from uh, twenty six point four, and we heard that his legs have never been better. His range is great so far. He's getting the sweet spot on the ball. Like, I don't know. I th- I think once things warm up for Yoan, I really do think that bright things are ahead of him as long as he could stay healthy. Yeah, I think Yoan gets unfairly lumped into all the White Sox being hurt thing. And he has been hurt, and he had long COVID, et cetera, et cetera. There's been a lot of excuses for him. But if you look at the player when he is healthy, I think he is pretty solid. He's a, a thing now that you can look at with these nine players that they have out there, and you say, okay, at least Yoan Moncada is doing the job. He's out here fielding it well at third, squaring the ball up decent enough, even though he's not having any real power, nothing over the wall yet. I think that's coming. Yeah, I – I'm not too concerned that in the first nine games he hasn't had a homer, especially in that Atlanta series. I mean, you're not going to hit anything out. I Cold mean, and the great pitchers there. DeYoung got real lucky, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, and blank name, uh, a, a guy who I just love. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, we'll end with this uh, comment from blank name. Ben Attendi hasn't hit a ball over 100 miles per hour or faster this year. Uh, it appears he's the only person on earth who lifted more in the offseason but got weaker. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think that's a perfect thing. Uh, my favorite stat from last year was uh, there's nine zones in a strike zone. Yep. Uh, and on swings, when Andrew Benatendi swung the bat, there was only one part of the zone that he had a positive run value. Right in the heart of the plate? No, uh, down and in. Uh, and that's where he hit like two of his homers. Uh, okay. uh, but really, I mean, you could throw it anywhere in the zone and that motherfucker ain't hitting it. I mean, we saw yesterday. I mean, Alec Marsh ends up blowing it past him. I know he goes two for four, um, but the White Sox lost, so I could still complain. And he's horrible. I don't think he's even above the Mendoza line. He's terrible. He's terrible. He's a contact hitter who hits under 200. Uh, makes no sense. And we are live, Barb. Hello. Live in col- and in color. Uh, we'll talk to you after the game. That Cubs, Barb? That's Cubs, Barb. I was Barb. just about to say, hi, Barb. Uh, you can follow Herb at Wall 23 is our CHGO White Sox community leader. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. And thank you to Sarah for producing the show. We will talk to you after the game. Goodbye. We all like the mayor. 